Howdy, it's Kyle talking about some of the ESTs in the US. In previous videos in this series, I take a look at natural features, including the longest and tallest, largest canyons, waterfalls, lakes, caves, that kind of stuff. In the previous one, I took a look at more human type things, populations and densities and areas for cities and counties. And for this one, I'll be looking at more climatic type stuff, hottest and coldest, wettest and driest, sunniest and cloudiest type things. So this is part three of USA Facts and Trivia, more climatic type things. I'm gonna start off by discussing the hottest cities in the US, and there are multiple ways to define hottest, so I'll go over a few of them. For highest annual average temperature, it's pretty interesting because three places are tied at the top and there are three very different climatically. Key West, Florida, Kailua, Kona, Hawaii, and Death Valley, California all have an average annual temperature of 78 degrees. And what that means is you take all the highs and all the lows throughout the year and take the average and they're gonna be 78 in these three places. But of course, the discrepancy in temperatures of each of these places is going to be quite different. In Death Valley, you're going to have temperatures well into the 110s, if not 120s, cold winter nights in the 30s and 40s, whereas in Kailua, Kona, and Key West, the temperature is almost always right around that temperature, although in Key West, there is more temperature variation than in Kailua. In terms of a single hottest month for average high temperature, it's July in Yuma, Arizona, where the average high is 107 degrees. Death Valley, California leads the country in terms of number of days per year with a high over 100 degrees. It hits triple digits 147 days of the year there. For cities in that same category, Bullhead City, Arizona has 135 days per year over 100 degrees. For big cities, Phoenix, Arizona is the hottest with an average annual temperature of 75 degrees and 170 days of the year over 90 degrees. So basically half of the year in Phoenix, the temperature is over 90. Now looking at the coldest places in the US, the lowest average annual temperature in the country is Utqiagvik, Alaska. The average annual temperature there is 12 degrees. The January average high is five degrees and the July average high is a whopping 47 degrees. This sits right along the Arctic Ocean. The old name of the town is Barrow. A lot of folks still know it as Barrow, but whatever you call it, it's cold. For the contiguous U.S., the coldest place is Mount Washington, New Hampshire. The average annual temperature is 28 degrees. But just like Death Valley, California, nobody lives on Mount Washington. The coldest city in the U.S. is Duluth, Minnesota, with an average annual temperature of 40 degrees. Duluth gets really cold in the winter, of course, being that far north, but it doesn't really get that warm in the summer, being right there on Lake Superior. Fargo, North Dakota has a slightly higher average annual temperature than Duluth because you get higher temperatures in the summer, not being right there along one of the Great Lakes. Amongst big cities in the country, Minneapolis is the coldest with an average annual temperature of 47 degrees. Now I'm going to take a look at the sunniest places in the U.S. and we're going back to Yuma, Arizona for this one. Yuma has an average annual sunshine rating of 90%. So what that means is 90% of the time during the daylight hours, the sun is shining. A little surprising is that number two is Redding, California at 88%. Third through six in this category are Vegas, Phoenix, Tucson, and El Paso, each at 85%. At the other end of the spectrum, the cloudiest place in the U.S. is Cold Bay, Alaska. This place couldn't possibly have a more appropriate name than Cold Bay, and there's a heavy cloud cover 83% of the time throughout the year. For the contiguous U.S., you have to go back to Mount Washington, New Hampshire, where 67% of the time has heavy cloud cover. But again, nobody lives there. The cloudiest town in the contiguous U.S. is Astoria, Oregon. 65% of the time is heavy cloud. This is right along the mouth of the Columbia River, not right along the coast. You have a combination of both that. It's often cloudy in Astoria. Not surprisingly, the two cloudiest big cities in the U.S. are Seattle at 62% and Portland, Oregon at 61% of the time with heavy clouds. But also in the high cloud category are Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and Grand Rapids, Michigan, all at 56% with cloud cover. Okay, now looking at the rainiest place in the U.S., you have to go to the Big Island of Hawaii and the Mountain View area. They average 229 inches of rain per year. This is in the mountains just above Hilo, and it rains most of the days of the year, sometimes really heavy rain as well. For the contiguous U.S., the wettest weather station is Mount St. Helens in Washington, 167 inches of rain per year. You have the combination of all the rain you get in that part of the country anyway, along with the orographic uplift of Mount St. Helens, really wet spot. 
So most of these cloudiest and rainiest places in the U.S. are in Hawaii, Alaska, Oregon, or Washington. So clearly the rainiest big city in the U.S. is going to be Seattle, right? Not so fast, my friend. It's actually Miami with an average annual rainfall of 67 inches. It certainly stays pretty cloudy and a lot of rain in Seattle during the winter, but it's also pretty sunny during most of the summer. Miami doesn't have as long drawn out storms as you have in the northwest, but you have a little bit of rain almost every day. You have all kinds of pop-up thunderstorms happening all the time. So not only does Miami have more rain in Seattle, it actually has twice as much. The average annual for Seattle is about 34 inches. Okay, so that's rain, but what about the snowiest places in the U.S.? The part of the U.S. that has the highest average snowfall is probably going to be some mountain somewhere in Alaska that doesn't have a weather station on it. But amongst the contiguous U.S. weather stations, the one that receives the most snow is Crater Lake, Oregon. So similar to Mount St. Helens, you have all that moisture in the northwest combined with the orographic uplift of the Crater Lake area. And as a result, a ton of snow gets dumped. The snowiest town in the contiguous U.S. and also the snowiest ski resort is Alta, Utah. Its average annual snow is just slightly less than Crater Lake at 458 inches. That's a ton of snow, but Utah is still a very dry state. The snowiest larger city in the U.S. is Syracuse, New York. Average annual snowfall of 128 inches. I've always been curious as to why Syracuse gets more snow than some of the spots directly around it, but my hypothesis is this small lake right here. The general directions that storms will move around here is going to be coming from the northwest, so as it's approaching Syracuse, it hits this lake right here in one little last spurt of lake effect snow. Now, I'm not sure if that last little cherry on top of snow is what puts Syracuse on top in terms of cities with the most snow in the country, but either way, it is. At the other end of the spectrum, the driest place in the U.S. is Stovepipe Wells inside Death Valley National Park in California. It has an average annual rainfall of 2 inches. For towns, the driest one is Brawley, California, in the southeastern portion of the state not far from the Mexican border. It averages 2.4 inches of rain per year. And amongst the big cities in the U.S., the one that gets the least amount of rain is fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, 4 inches annually. So now let's look at the windiest cities in the country. And for this one, it's Boston with an average annual wind speed of 12.3 miles per hour which means that at any given time of year, you can expect the wind to be blowing around Boston at about 12.3 miles per hour. And just behind Boston is Oklahoma City at an average of 12.2 miles per hour. But hey, what about that big thing in the Midwest that dares to call itself the Windy City? Where does it rank? Well, amongst big cities, Chicago's only 12th in the U.S. with an average annual wind speed of 10.3 miles per hour. So although that is windy, I do think the term windy city came from a guy who was mentioning the politics of the city, just a lot of hot air. But you know, either way, Chicago is not quite the windiest city. Okay, so now let's combine rain and wind and talk about who gets the most thunderstorms. For the number of days per year that have thunderstorms, the leader is Tampa with 83 days. And that's actually a decent amount lower than I was expecting. But regardless, each of the top 10 in terms of cities with the most days of thunderstorms per year are in the southeast. At the other end of the spectrum, the cities that have the fewest days with thunderstorms per year are San Francisco and San Diego tied with three days a year each. But I can say with first-hand experience, a California thunderstorm is nothing like one in the southeast. For the highest number of days with more than an inch of rain, the leader is Miami at 21 days and just behind is New Orleans at 20 days. So again, Miami has the highest average annual rainfall of big cities, so it has 21 big storms per year and a bunch of pop-up thunderstorms throughout the rest of the year. And at the other end, the city with the fewest number of major rainstorm days per year is fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. The city averages 0.2 days per year with a major rainstorm, which means Las Vegas gets a storm that brings an inch of rain once every five years. And the last thing I wanted to mention is where you have the darkest skies in the U.S., for the country as a whole, the most remote part of Alaska is going to have the darkest skies, but of course you're going to have to be there in the wintertime. For the contiguous U.S., the darkest skies in the country are the most remote parts of Death Valley National Park in California. And this is a huge spot. It's the largest national park in the contiguous U.S. There are very few roads, and once you leave the park, it's not like there's cities or ranches or anything. In general, the darkest skies in the country are going to be the remote portions of the interior west, but the absolute darkest is Death Valley National Park. 
So that was my look at a handful of climatic ests in the US and perhaps you found your personal favorite and least favorite place to live as a result of the climate of that place. But if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerd. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially John S. Welcome to the club. Thank you very much. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. As always, thank you very much.